Hey, welcome back to Fat City Vinyl. I am Doug, here to bring you the second part or the second half of my recent uh, record fair pickups. Uh, it's a beautiful day out here again. We're having kind of an early summer here. So I'm once again kicking it on the deck. Dogs are chilling over there. So let's get right into it. First off, I have a 12-inch single that I picked up at the record fair to show you. There you go. It is uh, Dennis Coffee, Calling Planet Earth on the Westbound label from 1978. Uh, Dennis Coffey, a session guitar player for Motown in the 60s, played on a lot of the Temptations albums for Norman Whitfield before uh, branching out in the early 70s and uh, doing his, his own funk thing. And that's uh, continuing in that vein. I had uh, this one right here, Mongo Santa Maria. Also found that one. Mongo 70, that is uh, on the Atlantic label. Didn't actually realize this was a reissue. It was sealed when I got it. And then uh, afterwards I noticed it's got a little thing on here, manufactured by Rhino Records, which kind of indicates it's a, it's a rec more recent reissue, but whatever. Kind of unusual for Mongo in this one, in that it's not uh, covers of pop and rock tunes of the day. It's mainly original songs that he's playing by uh, members of, the of his band at the time, particularly uh, Neil Creek. The piano player and uh, yeah very nice album by him kind of uh, afro-cuban percussion mixed with a bit of jazz with a bit of pop you guys probably are pretty familiar with Mongo Santa Maria uh, got this one I think from this very same seller it is Bob James 2 near mint copy here very close I picked up uh, one at uh, an earlier record fair last year, I think, late last year. CTI label. Bob James, kind of uh, jazz, funk, I guess you'd say. Pretty heavily sampled. Very happy to pick this one up. Patty Austin does one vocal on there. Got this one. Five stair steps. Kind of sweet Chicago soul on the Buddha label. I guess that's a uh, promo there. Uh, yeah, just sweet harmony. Kind of a bit of a fifth dimension influence to my uh, to my ears on here. Ooh, Child is of course their famous hit that is on here. A couple of Beatles covers. Just uh, beautiful vocal arrangements on there. James Brown, one for the James Brown collection. The new minister of the super heavy funk. This is Revolution of the Mind. This is, I believe, I can say on here, but early 70s. This is one of the live at the Apollo sessions. I think this is volume three, actually. So this is a live album. Double LP on Polydor, of course. Got all his hits at the time. Very loose kind of feeling. He does a lot of uh, stage patter, talking to the... Uh, the uh, audience and the band members, but uh, I mean, he's James Brown with that band backing him up. He could read the phone book and it would be funky. Getting into a bit of uh, Jamaican music here. This was a real weird find. It was uh, it was just too uh, too strange and unusual to leave behind. It is uh, Sugar Belly, Sugar Merengue. This is from the early 70s, 73-ish. Got all the, uh, the great Studio One albums on there, Heptones, I think. And this is a Studio One recording. It's actually on Porto Jam, which is a subsidiary label of Studio One. Studio, Studio One I've talked about many times, kind of the Jamaican Motown. But uh, Sugar Belly, this guy, this guy here, he was a uh, kind of a Mento player, started in the 50s. Mento is kind of the Jamaican version of Calypso. And he was famous for playing an instrument called the bamboo saxophone, which uh, is right there. The uh, kid there is kind of looking at it like there's something else in there. But uh, he would uh, he would make these instruments and play them. It has kind of a reedier, narrower kind of tone to it in some parts, kind of almost kazoo-like, I want to say. But uh, it's got the Studio One house band backing him up on here, so there is some kind of underpinnings of some solid reggae rhythms. But... Uh, yeah, kind of easy listening, bit of bit of calypso on there, a little bit of reggae too, but uh, basically kind of a curiosity. But the the real selling point of this was a uh, look at the back and it's signed. It says uh, say I to Hugh and Anne from Sugar Belly. So 
couldn't leave that behind, and it was really cheap, just a few bucks. Uh, another reggae one, this was a 12-inch single find on the Boucher's label out of uh, Harleston, London, England. This is a production by Clem Boucher. His nickname was Bush Ranger, so the Bush Ranger label. Uh, he was a London-based producer, big in the uh, the sound system kind of world there. Uh, he produced the debut album by uh, Jamaican DJ Tapazuki, Mana Warrior, in the early 70s, before moving into the, the emerging UK lover's rock market, where he was a uh, one of the main producers involved in that, and this is kind of in that style. Lover's Rock is kind of the, uh, a form of reggae with the, basically the, the heavy, heavy roots reggae rhythms, but uh, lyrics, more, more love songs, and dealing with that kind of, those kind of subjects. But this is uh, Happiness and Not Loneliness, Junior Bailey and Saxophone Hugh, kind of obscure artists, don't know too much about them. Side is rolling version side. Uh, Clem Boucher also produced this album, which uh, this wasn't actually a record fair find. I found it at a store like a couple of days before the fair, and I had actually shown a new reissue of this in an earlier video, which uh, it came out very recently, end of last year, as Dillinger vs. Trinity Clash. It's from the late 70s originally. came on the um, Burning Rockers label. So I was showing this in an earlier video, that's a new reissue, but I found uh, this is the same album, but an original French pressing from 1977. And it's just kind of credited to Dillinger and under the title Jamaican Dollars. But other than that, it's the same album. And uh, if you read the fine print on here, it is the two, two DJs, that is Jamaican kind of rappers, and uh, kind of combining on the tracks here. And this is produced by Clem Boucher in London. Kind of a... Uh, Odd, odd sound quality in parts on this one, kind of a muted sound as if, uh, which is maybe to be expected from a, a couple of Jamaican based artists and an album that was produced in the UK and tapes probably tra traveling back and forth and who knows what else going on, but pretty decent DJ album. It was just kind of unusual to find that, so I had to, uh, had to pick that up and it was pretty reasonably priced. I was able to use a store discount to get that pretty cheap. Okay, last few record fair finds here. We're getting into the heavy hitters. I put pulled uh, this one, Delroy Williams, I Stand Black. This is from 1984. It is a Canadian pressing on uh, Message, which is Augustus Pablo's label, distributed by Shanakee, which is a North American label. Uh, this came out in 1984, produced by Augustus Pablo. He plays melodica on here. Uh, Delroy Williams, kind of a member of his uh, his band, his posse, whatever you want to call it. Deep Roots album here. Uh, this has recently been reissued by the Only Roots label out of uh, France, I believe. I do actually have the reissue of this, but uh, had the opportunity to get this one. Couldn't pass it up. Delroy Williams, classic there. One further one here. This is Ghetto Rock by Reggae Regular. This is also 1984. Reggae Regular were a UK band formed in London in 1976. The original name was The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, which uh, got changed pretty quick when their manager uh, got a hold of them. They were actually initially managed by Castro Brown, who was a business associate of Dennis Brown. No relation as far as I know. But uh, they recorded a song called Where Is Jaw? which was released as the debut 12-inch single on the Greensleeves label, which I've shown quite a few times, and this album is also on that label. Iconic, classic label of the late 70s, early 80s. So that song was the first 12-inch single. It was released concurrently with uh, Dr. Alimentado's Best Dressed Chicken in Town as the first LP release. They kind of came out right about the same time. They did a heavy promotion on the Where Is Jaw single, which uh, became a classic. Uh, they went on to record, they joined, they signed with CBS after that, released their debut album, Victims. Then the, the band kind of had a split into two factions. A separate faction recorded the I&I &I album as, uh, in 1980. And uh, these guys had, uh, 
they had had kind of a, a parting of the ways with over the Victims album, where uh, they had kind of gone into not less of a roots reggae sound and kind of broadened their sound to include some jazz and soul and stuff like that, and just build themselves as the regulars, which uh, caused some conflicts in the band, and a few guys left and and uh, entrenched themselves and did a deep roots album. So these guys regrouped kind of a new lineup back to the name Reggae Regular and put this album out in 1984, again on green sleeves. It's uh, Grell 64, so the 64th album released on that label by uh, 1984. It started in 77-ish, I think. So they were pretty busy. And classic album here. Actually, not really well known as a classic, but uh, really enjoyable. Title song is anthemic. It was issued as a 12-inch single. And the quality doesn't really dip a whole lot right through the album. There's uh, one instrumental on here, but just uh, heavy UK-style roots reggae. The UK sound was a little bit different from the Jamaican sound in that they're, they were based more around a, a full uh, self-contained band structure rather than uh, you know pre-laid down rhythm tracks voiced over by various uh, artists. So it's slightly different sound. Some have even called it superior to the Jamaican sounds of the time. Now the last and biggest find of the record fair was one I've, I'm still kind of stunned that I actually own a copy of this. I don't you toss around the word grail very often, but this is grail-ish, and uh, I would have had no idea I would be able to own a copy of this that morning when I left for the, for the record fair. But I spotted this one in the bins, it was pr really reasonably priced, not in great shape, but uh, you can see a little it is Earth, Roots, and Water, Innocent Youths. This is from 1977 on the Summer Records label. You can tell the cover's kind of coming apart there. There's definitely some scratches on the vinyl. It plays very well. This was reissued by Light in the Attic in 2008, I believe. Here's the CD version of it. This was reissued by a friend of mine for Light in the Attic. Kevin Howes. Cipriano is his DJ name he goes by. He was there at the show. He uh, he spotted that, that record in the bins uh, earlier that morning, so he was he was pretty stoked for me that I found it. I think I, I, I picked it up and wandered over and mumbled something <laughs> incoherent about finding it, but uh, he already knew it was there. So anyways, classic Roots reggae album out of Canada. This was the debut album on the Summer Records label which has been um, anthologized in, as part of that Light in the Attic series. There's another, some other releases focusing on the rest of their music. The Summer Records label started in 1974. This came out in 77. It was the first LP. Uh, Earth, Roots, and Water were kind of the young um, session band that were, that were laying down the tracks for visiting vocalists from uh, Jamaica and, and native to Canada that were, would come in... Uh, and record for Jerry Brown's label here. Jerry Brown had set up his uh, studio out of his home at uh, 7081 Landon Court, Malton, Ontario, suburb of Toronto. Uh, he was working as an auto body laborer during the day, 9 to 5, and then uh, by, by night and on the weekends all the, the reggae artists would start passing through and creating music, and these were the guys laying down the tracks. Kind of a loose membership, uh, Johnny Osborne, who was staying in Canada at the time, was uh, was associated with them. He was also in a group called Aishan People around the time, at the same time, and he is on some. So you can I can pretty well tell his vocals in in a few few of these songs, but uh, he would go up go back to Jamaica by the late seventies, early eighties, and become a very big star there through the nineteen eighties. So he is on here. This was the only LP these guys released. They were working on a second one. They opened for The Police on their debut North American tour. They weren't really well known there at the time. Gave a copy of this album to Sting, apparently. They got along great with those guys. The Police were, were pretty used to reggae from being in the UK and, and being involved in that scene. But uh, in Canada, it was still kind of a tough sell at the time. And despite some support from the, the punk community, the group uh, never made it past that album. So Light in the Attic unearthed that, reissued that. And this is the replica of the poster that originally came with this album. Original pressing of this was uh, 500 copies. 
There's only two copies for sale on Discogs right now, both north of 200 bucks in better condition than this. So I got a pretty good score on that. The seller gave me about a couple of things off the same seller, so I got it for uh, very cheap, all things considered. So totally happy to pick that up. So that is my record fair haul, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.